All right, welcome back to Off the Tap. This week is episode 28, and we're doing Brooklyn Lager this week, which is from Brooklyn Brewery. How creative. Is it based out of Brooklyn? I think I don't so. want to look at the, I don't want to look at the can because yeah. I'll, I'll look at the can after we do the ABV. Yeah, don't look at the can yet because I looked at it earlier and I saw it. Uh, here's the thing. I know what the first number is, but I don't know what the point is afterwards. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if you should be allowed to participate. So then. If y'all get close, then I'll take a guess. If y'all say 5. the right 8. first number, then I'll take I'll take a guess. OK, all right. Five point eight. Yeah, okay. I'm even taking a sip. Andrew, what about you? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, you should probably try it first, huh? Yeah. I can uh, try it yet. Sorry. You just went 5.8 off the rip without trying? Yeah. It's, just a, it's a lager, I guess. I don't know. Also, I feel like if I get it, because I have one number in my head, and I feel like if I get it right, it shouldn't count. I like this. Oh, yeah. I like, I like this. I, like, I, I love lagers, though. It's really good. It's like, it tastes like Boston water. It tastes like... If I were to go in and order a Your beer, friend from Boston. if I want a, if I want a beer, this is the kind of beer I get. You know what it reminds <laughs> me of is is Patty's Pub from uh, Invincible. No, is, is Patty's Pub an Invincible too? No way. Patty's Pub is uh, from uh, it's always sunny always in Philadelphia. Sunny. Oh, what's the one in Invincible where <laughs> they always go for all the beers? I don't know. I like saying Dude. beers that way, though. I know. It's so fun. Yeah. Beers. It makes me feel like I'm a four-year-old who's an adult saying beers. 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 <laughs> that, that was a good one. They're like a four-year-old's like beers. Beers. I'm going to say. I'm going to say. Beers. It's just a little say, less pronunciation on the W. Beers. Yeah, beers. W's in it. Beers. 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 Me and the boys are going to have some beers. Me and the boys are going to have some beers. <laughs> That's just what they sound like when they get really drunk. Yeah. Listen, I hope there's no Boston natives listening to this. We're sorry. Y'all can make fun of us all y'all want, though, you know? Yeah, I put my cowboy hat on, ride my damn horse to the square in town. I had to ride my horse down to, the, down to the saloon and get this beer, you know? <laughs> yeah, you can make we fun are. of us, too. You know, we love everybody on this podcast. Um, I'm going to go I'm gonna go 4.7569. Okay, I'm gonna give my guess, but if it's if it's the right number, then I lose because I think I remember what it was. There you go. Five point six. Whoa. Nope. Uh, five point two. Five point two. Oh dang! What was your Sean? Five point eight. I still feel like I cheated though. So who is I count? the closest? What What was your actual get? What What well, was, was yours? Six away. Andrew was five away. So. So I'll, I'll give it to Andrew. Four point seven five eight nine. Andrew was four point. Three, four, away. So, pie. so it was like somewhere around pie. Yeah. All right, I'll give it to Andrew. I, f I feel like I cheated a little bit. So. All right, drink losers. Ah, sounds good. I will all drink right. this beer all day, fucking every day. Yeah, I, I like this beer. This I like this beer a lot. The can is not impressive at all. No, you know, this this can gives me the exact vibe of where I would be drinking this beer. Is this can black or brown? Nah. Nah, this gives me too much of a Boston Celtics vibe. It's very Celtic-y, but that's not the that's not the vibe I get from it. Black or brown? It's black, it's black. with like gold it... accents okay. and green. Yeah, so this 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 thing around the green, this is all green right here. Right. And then this circle is gold, and then this mm. this is gold. It should have made it brown. Well, For gold what? is why because Brooklyn's doo doo. <laughs> Whoa, dude! Just kidding. I'm just kidding, dude. I'm just kidding. I think black yeah. is just like one of the staple colors in Brooklyn because that's the color of the Brooklyn Nets jerseys. I, mean, like I guess I was gonna say white. this. I guess I was gonna say this is like my least favorite can, but I, I kind of want to take it back because it's like you say, it kind of fits it. I think a little bit. It's just not that impressive. It's you know? it's very. I don't want to say generic, but like it's very plain. You know what I mean? Like the can is very, it's not like over the top for a, what I assume is a craft beer. It's not like, like over the top, but it's also like not plain lettering. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they, weren't, they like didn't they, just write Brooklyn Lager on the can. It's, like their design or marketing team, whoever is the people out there doing this. I mean, really, I, I mean, honestly, I think it's like 
they don't deserve a raise. They don't deserve to be fired. They're just like there, you know. Yeah. I also maybe the other beers they make have different cans. I just, you know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't know, but I love the beer. Oh, absolutely. The beer's fantastic. And I would love to meet the brewmaster, especially if he had an accent like that. You know, he's like, yeah. You know, I've spent 12 years making beers, you know? It's probably more than 12 with the flavor of this since, bad boy. Since I hey, was Andrew. like tw- since I was like 12, Polly and I have been making beers. Hey, Andrew. Polly. Huh. <laughs> Polly. Me and Polly. I'll sink you in the river. <laughs> All right. Andrew, I just want to let you know that this beer is brewed in Utica. Which is? Not Brooklyn. Okay, is it still New York? It is still New York, yes. Okay. Here's All right. The... I'm not, I'm not going to hate them then. I just dislike them. You know what I mean? Here's the thing, too, is there are, like, uh, like Yingling, for example. It's coming to Texas, right? Think it's like, the literally, Lord. it'll be here this fall, baby. We'll be getting it. Okay? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. But, yeah. Can this become thing, a strictly Yingling podcast? Like we just do Yingling every no, week? No, it won't be. <laughs> but but they're not going to be brewing it out east. The stuff that we get in Texas will be brewed in Texas. Texas, yeah. baby. But A-O-E. it's the same recipe. That truck, that armored truck that I sent y'all the the picture of, that was yeah. the like the armored Brinks truck, but it had Yingling painted across it. Mm-hmm. It had the recipe in there. That's all it was. And it was Dude, like a, cool. they police escorted it all the way from where it's where it is in the east now, all the way to like Fort Worth or wherever. Dude, it that's going. some SpongeBob SquarePants. I was gonna say it's like the Krabby Patty formula. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they got it there, and the recipe it was it wasn't even in uh, like words; it was in like pictures, and they had to decipher it. Dude, that'd be that'd be <laughs> yeah. so cool to like be rich enough to like do some shit like that for like, I I don't know like my social security card from my safety deposit box box at a bank, right? Just, just mail it across the country. It. Please. Yeah, that's a pretty good. That's a pretty good name for a beer. Safety deposit box. Oh, <laughs> dude. Bad. That's good, bro. Oh man. That's good. That, that's going to be our, one of our first beers when we open up a brewery and it's going to be a, gonna it's going to be a, now. it's yeah. And it's going to have like a green can. Everybody was already listening. Like, the government's already listening to us anyways through our phones and stuff and microphones at this point. But yeah. now people that listen to the podcast are going to go, ooh, that well, is a good name. Yeah, this, one, this one's on yeah. the record. Safety deposit box, dude. That's awesome. I'm going to start saying stuff just to Sean in, like, a private call. And I just yeah. say things. And then he'll just say, that's a good name for a beer. <laughs> <laughs> it is. All right. What's your, how are y'all feeling about it? How are y'all feeling about the beer at the beer? I love there? it. Not bad. Mm-hmm. So, uh, it looks like bad. it belongs in Sean's hand. Look at it. It does because you have the flannel on right now, and flannels are yeah. really very Boston. Yeah. yeah. I don't, this isn't even Boston. It's Brooklyn. What are we talking about? That's eh, Utica. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> true. True. I. Uh, I'm gonna I'm go eight point three on this bad boy. Eight three. I love it. I like it. I love it. And I want some more of it. Mm. You should write a song that goes like that. That's pretty catchy. Yeah, I know. People have told me that. Did you make that up yourself? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Copyright. I mean, it's good. It's good, but it's not like remarkable. You know? I think it's pretty damn good. It's not like fantastic. Like it's not worthy of like nine or higher is what I'm saying. So, I, don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to think lagers are my favorite beer. I don't know. I'm going 8.8. Like, I want to walk up into the bar and be like, yeah, man, what kind of lagers you get on tap? You know, like. Oh, yeah. Lagers are, lager. one, are probably my second favorite beer. Style. What is Yingling? I think uh, that is a lager, know. isn't it? I think it's a lager, too. I'll give it a. Uh-huh. I give it an 8.1. All in the eights respectable yeah very respectable because it is pretty good not gonna lie i think i think i'll be able to rate it better after i finish this one and start the second one i think i'll have a better sense of what i'm getting into yeah you, you know what i would to, love you want me to tell you all the vibe i'm getting drinking this high key what? like i know we, we've we've talked we've bounced back and forth about doing this at the beginning of the end i just it hit me so fast when i when i tasted it i am in a hole in the wall bar that has uh-huh. two pool tables. 
Uh huh. Out up like kind of back in the dark corner of Wait, the bar. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna interrupt you. How many rails are dead on those pool tables? Three at least. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> three, three combined or three on each? Three combined. Okay. Like three combined. Yeah, they're not. It, they're you got not like completely a, half dead. It's just you got like a half a chalk. You know, like not the full chalk. Oh there's yeah, just yeah, yeah. There's just there's just hand chalk. There's no like Q chalk. <laughs> no, 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 no like, yeah, no, no, no. What do you call it, like tip chalk or there's, something? There's cute. Yeah, like there's there's cute uh chalk, but it's it's just completely it's worn like down. Torn in the half paper. because it's been like <laughs> it's, dropped like forty it's in times. Twenty pieces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and like there's just there's and on the fe it's the wet. felt is green. That's kind of the vibe I get from the from the can, right? Is that green felt? Oh, yeah. And there's just there's just chalk all over it from people and powdering the their hands and getting yeah, on and the there. bar smells like straight cigarettes. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. Cigarette <laughs> butts, not not burning cigarettes. Cigarette butts. That's what <laughs> like, you know, like. You know the smell when you put a like. you put a cigarette out in like some dirty water. Mm -hmm. That's what the bar smells like. That's what it smells like. And there's there's uh, beer can like stains all over the side of the pool table. Yeah, and you're the only person in there. You're the per you're the only person in there under thirty five. Absolutely, and I also am the only person with a mustache that's not white in this bar. <laughs> yes. Uh, but and the Sounds pool table like company. Exactly, and the and the pool tables are the small pool, like the bar pool tables, not the the big ones. You know what I mean? Not the not the ten footers. Mm -hmm. They're like the little six or seven footers. Yeah, there. It's one of the ones where uh, if you scratch, the cue ball goes into the uh, return. Yeah. Instead of out to get it back, you have to pay to get the cue ball back. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I walk into this bar and I go up to the the bartender and I, uh, I'm like, hey, what kind of what, what beer y'all got here? And he starts naming them off, and he gets to this one, and I'm like, I don't think I've ever had that. And so I get it, and I open it up, and I take a drink, and I say, I'm gonna play some goddamn pool right now. That's what I'm gonna. You know, do. Just, you know what that just mm. made me think of is That's like you're the telling this whole story. That's awesome. You're telling this whole story. And then when you said, and then I get that beer, I was thinking like you crack it and you take a sip and you're like, the camera is pan like circling around you, around your head while you're drinking. And mm -hmm. then slowly you're like, you're in the foreground and in the background of the camera, the bar is changing into this like majestic, like 1700s, like old timey bar. And you finish taking the sip and you look mm -hmm. around and everything's in black and white. Yes. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. And there's uh, yeah, there's like show tune music playing. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody talks like this because they're on a radio in the 1700s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I turn back that around was, to the bartender and you see a full perfect, suit. That was a perfect yeah. impression. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Oh my god, is that Babe Ruth from the Yankees? That's it. To me, this is one of those uh like one of those that kind of bar beer. That's what it fit tastes like to me. Yeah. I with that. That's also well, doesn't the can kind of give that vibe to? Yeah, it yeah. does. Like for me, it's I, I kind of have a similar one. Mine is like I'm at the bar. Me and the bartender, you know, we're close friends. Um, he knows me really well because me and my wife, you know, we've been going through a rough patch. She says I'll never amount to anything, right? And so I always <laughs> go to this bar. This sounds and I, familiar. And I drink this beer with the bartender, and then you know, every week he's on my we we play like tackle football on the side, and we're, he's on my football team, and um. You know, like I, everyone tells me how good I am, so I decide that I'm gonna go to do, do some like walk on tryouts for the football team of my town, mm -hmm. and they say that yeah, man, you're like you're you're pretty good. Like we'd like to bring you on as like a special teams guy, and then so like I I'll be like on the special teams like running and like tackling guys uh -huh. and drinking beer at the bar, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and you know they they like my name's Vince. You know, uh, last yeah. name's like Italian, like Papali or something, you know, and I drink <laughs> this beer at the bar with, would yeah. They, would they say that you're like, some, sometimes some people would say that you would, you're invincible. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they yeah. would say that. Yeah. Like you, you're not catching that guy, you know, and, he, and you can, you could tackle him. You could hit him as hard as you want, but he's, mm. he's invincible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, my like my wife. Plot to him. Yeah, you should give yeah, that so. to Hollywood. Yeah, but I'm gonna make sure it's this beer. You know, that's uh -huh. everyone's drinking this beer. Yeah. So, you know, since we're all going so in depth, <clears throat> I'm in 1940s Brooklyn, 
and I have a really bad sports betting addiction. Mm-hmm. And I've been I've been really hoping that the Yankees will win, and I've been betting on the Yankees, and uh, I'm really down bad. I'm like twenty twenty thousand dollars in the hole. In my uh, okay. I'm at the bar. This is 1940s, so you know. Well, then bet money. forty. Yeah. Bet forty. Eventually, you'll you'll catch up on your bet. Yeah. Remember, if you lo- it's yeah. like your coin so flip. You, if you lose one, you're guaranteed to win the next one. Yeah. Yeah. So so you know, unless you yeah, well, I, and I'm at the bar, right? Uh-huh. And uh, I've been kind of laying low because my bookie's looking for me because I owe him so much money. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I'm at the bar, and I I get one of these beers, and I drink it, and I set it down on the table. And as soon as I set it down on the table, I like we're playing some pool and I feel refreshed. And then someone kicks the door open and three dudes walked in all wearing tanks, all wearing tank tops. <laughs> like, like wife beater okay. tank tops? When you, when you first said tanks, I pictured a literal tank on their back. <laughs> That's how big these guys why. are, yes. I don't know they're all carrying They're all carrying panzer tanks on their back. And they just <laughs> walk in and crack a pool stick over my back. And then they carry me out of the bar. That's what I feel like. And then I end up coaching a little league baseball team <laughs> in, a, in an impoverished neighborhood to pay back my uh-huh. debt. That sounds like a, a good movie too. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna be honest with my you. My name is also Keanu Reeves. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So this I've never seen this movie. I forget what it's it? called. What is it called? I can't remember what it's called either. Uh, basically, it was the plot to the movie. He has a sports betting problem, and to pay off his sports betting problem, he uh, teaches a baseball team baseball? for underprivileged kids. Yeah, <laughs> how does he pay that? How does he pay off gambling debts with that job? He gets like five hundred dollars a month for it, or something like that, <laughs> or five hundred dollars a week, I think. Something like in nineteen forty. No, it's not nineteen forties. I made the nineteen forties up. Oh, no! Yeah, I want to like watch this movie. If it's got Keanu Reeves, oh, it's hardball a great movie. You should. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's called hardball. I really loved the, the movie Moneyball. I watched it for the first time. Yeah, this is totally different than that. Yeah, I watched it for the first time like six months ago and fell in love. Loved it. That is a good Money, movie. Moneyball is one of my favorite movies. It's, it's top three baseball movie for sure for me. Mm. I don't think I've seen it since like 013. But... Boys, how would you feel if we had this beer sitting on the Green Monster at the fucking Boston Red Sox Stadium? Uh, I wouldn't feel anything at all because that's not in Brooklyn. I know, but I mean, logger kind of like this is what I mean. Jeez. Maybe a Yankee stadium. No, no, no one wants to go watch the Yankees. If you put on the pinstripes, you're a douchebag. I'll go watch the Mets. <laughs> what about the Mets? Let's go watch the Mets with this beer. Yeah. Okay. I think the Mets are actually. I think the Mets are actually in Brooklyn. No, I don't know. Well, I know uh, to get to the Mets stadium is really the last stop on the subway. What? What if? We could have been alive in the time to watch the Brooklyn Dodgers play, and we had this this in our hands, and and it's in black and white. We're oh, we're yeah. all colorblind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The Mets, the Mets might be in Brooklyn. Yeah, they yeah. are. Kind of. Oh, they're in Queens. Queens. Yeah, that's King the... of Queens. King Queens. Great show. Uh, yeah, That's never take the subway. To, never take the subway to uh, Lagardia Airport in Queens, which is right next to the uh, Met Stadium. Never take the subway there. Why? Super sketch. Uh, so, I think I told you we we left our hotel at five a.m. They, you know, they say New York's a city that never sleeps, right? Mm-hmm. Well, at five a.m., even the homeless people were asleep. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, we're walking through the parks, and all the homeless people are sleeping on the benches, and we take the subway. And there's probably like, I don't know, 20 people on it. And then it's slowly dwindling at every stop. And then you have to go like across the river, like to get from Manhattan to Queens. Mm -hmm. And the stop right before we crossed the river, everybody got off except for me, Caleb, and a homeless guy. And it's me and Caleb on the way to the airport. This homeless guy is completely unclothed except for boxers. Nice. And we're, uh, we're we're almost to LaGuardia to get to our flight. And the subway lady would come and be like, <laughs> and, he would, and he would look up at the speaker and he'd go, <laughs> and yell at it every time she would talk. And me and Caleb were like, hell no, bro. I don't know where we're going, but we're getting off at the next stop. 
That's we're like, oh God. It. We're walking. This is Delta the 288. Queen, Queens was horrible, dude. Queens was disgusting. It was like the shithole of the United States. Like, if you, you couldn't pay me money to go back to where we went in Queens. What is the worst? Um, what what are they called? Air, what what are they called in New York? Like areas of New York, or what is it? Uh, like barrios. No, they're called uh beats. John. Oh, God, I'll think about them a little bit. States. States. No. Sub sub neighborhoods. No, I know what they're called, but I can't think of it. What Counties. Are the, the worst. <laughs> like Brooklyn and Queens are both cities and like like the like what is the, the what is the, um like the, the bronx the, what's the woodlands isn't it like a municipality no they have like a unique name um yeah they do it's the fucking bronx <laughs> i think the bronx are just the bronx burrows they're called burrows burrows yeah burrows. i said barrio i was close you were close yeah also, I think this this episode is going to be rated R because I've slipped up and said the F word like four times. <laughs> the, the so the five. That's what happens when you pregame? <laughs> yeah, the five boroughs of New York are Manhattan, Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn, and Staten Island. Staten Island. Staten Island. Dude, you know what I just thought about you when I was reading I those off? I don't want to live ever in my life. Jersey, Where? Jersey Staten, sucks. Staten Island. <laughs> 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 I've taken the subway through Jersey too. That was a doesn't look I, very fun. It looks I was like, just saying how I met your mother joke because everyone says Jersey sucks. Oh yeah, you know. So this is what I'm thinking about when we're talking about Jersey New York. Jersey sucks. I'm thinking of the thinking of the Great Gatsby, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, in the Great Gatsby, when it's like that very industrial era like part when he's like he's like driving the car through it, and it's like smokestacks and like very industrial and it's like very dark and dirty looking. That's what New Jersey looks like. I've never seen uh, Great Gatsby. Dude, have you read the book? I was supposed to in high school, but I just Are you American? I bullshitted my way through the uh the tests and everything. It, this is just a That's recurring topic. This is a recurring scenario on the podcast. We literally talk <laughs> about some of the greatest movies and then Andrew I, says I've never seen it. I think we should make it a recurring topic. It should be has Andrew seen this? <laughs> no. <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio, dude. That's no. a good movie. That's a and it's not like the movies like amazing, actually but that one's just story. called Gatsby. Yeah, the one with Leo is just a good called story. Gatsby. First of all, he lives. The I got life on I want to go back in time and live. That's what I want to do. The only Absolutely. thing I remember about Gatsby is it was it was from our English class, and she, it was the green light, and it, it's like, what is the green light symbolized? And it's oh. like, oh, it symbolizes um, envy. <laughs> Yeah, it's basically I can't. I don't remember any of the characters' names, but something like Gatsby. the Great Gatsby was on like Staten Island, and the light that he was seeing was on like Long Island or something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. Did you ever, Sean? Sean, what is your what is your favorite place to visit in New York? My favorite place to visit in New York, mm -hmm. uh, like Manhattan, like. No, you, like uh, New York, New wherever, York, or wherever, just wherever, wherever you've been, or where, because I've never been there. So, uh, hmm, I've been twice, and I feel like I went to similar places both times. Uh, Grand Central Park is really cool. The Empire State Building is kind of a letdown. Uh, yeah. well, it's really cool, but you got to pay like, you got to pay like forty bucks to go to the top, and there's always like a long ass line. So I've never been to the top. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh. -huh. uh but both times I've stayed, I've stayed right next to Grand Central Park. So I've been through there a couple of times, and that's really cool. I, I'd say probably one of my favorite places is uh, my two favorite, I guess, would be if you know John Wick, the movie in John Wick where they, mm -hmm. uh, where she's like, you have broken the rules of the Continental, and they kill her for trying to assassinate John yeah, Wick. Yeah, 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 yeah. In front of that fountain. Yeah. And that big fountain that's in. Uh, Grand Central Park, and you can like go there. There's uh, a bunch of movies that have been filmed there. John Wick, Friends with Benefits, I think has a scene there, right? Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Which one is Friends with Benefits? With uh, uh, yeah, like, and Ashton Kutcher. Yeah, yeah, no, oh, not okay. Ashton Kutcher. Not Ashton Kutcher. It's uh, Justin Timberlake. Oh, okay, what's the one with Ashton Kutcher? 
Uh, is that a 70s show? <laughs> no, no, there's another they one. Mo- they did a movie. To- oh, no, that's uh, No Strings Attached, the one that Ashton Kutcher's in. Yeah, that's right. There's also... Uh, what's, the one, what's the one with uh, Jason Bateman that's like that? Oh, Not God, Jason Bateman. Idea. Jason Sudeikis. Who's that? I love Jason you, man. Sudeikis? No, it's not I love you, man. That's Paul Rudd. Yeah, uh, Paul Rudd. That's Paul that's Jason Paul Rudd and the Siegel. tall guy from How I Met Your Mother. Yeah, Jason Siegel. Jason Siegel. About Jason? Siegel. Jason Sudeikis is uh the one of the one of the guys from Horrible Bosses. I recognize the last name. Is he the one with the high pitched voice? Jason Sudeikis is in We're the Millers. Yes. Oh, He's okay. He's the dad. I know you're talking about. Mothers. I already know who you're talking about now. So that was a good, good way to describe. But he it. has a he has a movie that's like Friends with Benefits or whatever that's with someone as well. I can't remember what it's called, but I really love it because it's Jason. Sudeikis. I love all those movies, man. Oh, me too. I'm a rom com fanatic, bro. Oh, I am too, dude. Freaking Failure to Launch. Huh. Oh, bro. How to Lose a Guy in Ten Some, Days. Oh, Some Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> Oh bro, yeah, he's the best no, rom com guy no there is. There's no better rom com on the planet than than Matty Am, bro. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Matty Ice, bro. You kidding me? Yeah. Ice in his veins for rom coms, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He talks about it in his book. He just he just released. You should listen to it. It's really good. I actually um, bought it the well, uh, yeah, I bought it the other day on Audible. I'm gonna listen to it. It's awesome, oh, dude. You should. It's fantastic. Green light. Green light. <laughs> Upper sticker. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then Rockefeller Center. That's. That's pretty cool. Um, I, I mean, I think for sure. I don't know now, actually. Like, I would have wanted to go to the old Yankee Stadium before they built a new one. Even yeah. though I absolutely despise the Yankees with a passion and a, it, I would it would hurt my soul to be there. I think it's something that would be really cool to to go see. Because I mean, the, the old one. I don't know so much about the new one. It's like it's different. You know, there's not history there or anything. Babe Ruth didn't yeah. play on that field. Yeah, you know what I mean. Right. Lame. Well, what? dude, because I mean, you fly if you fly into uh, wherever the hell airport is in New Jersey, uh, Newark. If you fly into Newark, then you go like if you take the subway, you end up in like the lower, lower part of Manhattan, and so you have to. It's literally like a forty-five minute subway ride just to get up to like the Bronx and Yankee Stadium. So yeah. I've, I've I've always wanted to go. But that's a long subway ride, dude. It probably, honestly, it probably takes an hour. I don't know. To me, it would be cool to do. I mean, I want to visit all baseball stadiums, anyways. But that would definitely be the first thing I did in New York if I was able to go. And, like, dude, if you, the, if, you, if, if you hit the lottery, would you? That's what you. Would that be one of the first things you did? Is just go to all the baseball parks? Oh, absolutely. That would, yeah, be, that would be cool. Hundred percent. One hundred percent. I would. In fact, I think, and I think one of the first stadiums I would want to go to. And here's the thing: is I've seen it, but I never, I wasn't able to go there because when I went, they weren't playing a game in in that city that weekend. But the Padres, dude, the Padres and the San Francisco Giant, San Diego, San Diego, the one that the Padres, I, the stadium because, dude, that it's I, right there. Like it, it's well, literally, it's right on the bay, dude. It's so tight, and mm. I don't know. It'd be really cool. And then I think San Francisco because it's also right on the. On the bay Which there. one's the one where they, if they hit a home run, it literally goes in the... People are sitting out there in canoes. San Francisco. Oh, that'd be cool. That would be cool. Yeah. I would want... I would want to go... To, I would want to go to two games there. Like, if they had a home spurt, and one of them I would want to be in the stadium, and one of them I would want to rent a kayak and be out there. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. I've been to the... I think I've been to the Giants stadium. Maybe. Uh, I, I would definitely want to sit in that right field section, though. Yeah. So if someone yeah. does hit one out of the park, I can just watch it fly over. <laughs> That'd be so yeah. tight, dude. That'd be so well, tight. So the first thing I'll say is uh, one of the my favorite stadiums I've ever been to is Colorado Rockies. Really? Where like oh, when I bet people that's nice. when people would hit the home runs, they would shoot the fountain thing up. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Whenever I saw that when I was when I was a kid. Um, I think the Marlins have one of the nicest baseball stadiums. Well, plus well, it'd be cool to be in Miami. I mean, but that's because it was built like seven years ago. Yeah, it's eight not that old. Ago. Or it was um, remodeled then, I guess. I don't know if they rebuilt yeah. an entire stadium. But... It's it's freaking huge, dude. Like, oh, it's when massive. we drove through Miami, we drove through Miami. I looked for like every time we drove, I would look for the Dolphin Stadium. Couldn't see it. But no matter where you're at in Miami, you can see the Marlins Stadium. Like yeah. it's 
like it is i'm not joking it's probably twice it's it looks twice the size of like nrg yeah and stanton's like crank well i mean it tells you something when stanton's cranking 550 foot homers in there yeah <laughs> oh and that humid air bro Ooh, <laughs> sheesh. yeah i mean i think listen um, i know i'm biased but i genuinely think that minute Maid park is one of the nicest stadiums in baseball i love minute Maid, dude <clears throat> And and Robert it's not, Boxes? and I mean that's I'm only saying that because one retractable roof. It's 2021. Every baseball team should have a retractable roof. I don't care anymore. And uh, well, waterproof don't, baseball players don't a few of them yeah. have it now. <laughs> well, the, more and more people are building, they're like doing it. But yeah, but know. Minute Maid did it in what the 80s? <laughs> no, it, well we had a dome. Until oh, yeah, you know, exactly. but but the Minute, Minute Maid Park was a, a retractable roof in like the nineties, I think. Yeah, we were ahead of the game. It was, in, it was Enron then. It wasn't late late nineties, I think. Early nineties, <clears> I don't know. But I don't know. I mean, it's just so nice, dude. It's so well kept. I don't understand. Like, I don't know. That I, I understand. I'm biased. For it's that. an awesome bar park, and I, I mean, I walk in there and I feel amazing. Like you just smell yeah. the freaking. You just smell the air, and it's amazing. It's beer and hot dogs and popcorn and nachos and freaking Pop all that. It's incredible. Popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know, but I know that my least favorite thing about visiting New York would definitely be running into people that live there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I wouldn't want to walk in here. It, it, yeah. It's it's so weird, like. It's such a weird dynamic um, because literally when me and Caleb got off the subway, I'm going to have to say the B word uh, or I'll just bleep it. Um, but we got off the subway and the first thing we heard someone in New York say, so there's this lady sitting, this homeless lady sitting on the ground and she's like, dollar, dollar, give me a dollar, give me a dollar. Anything helps. Give me a dollar, sir. Give me a dollar. And everybody. And she's like, just not stopping like she said it on repeat right and she's like give me a dollar and this dude walks by her, by her and she's like sir sir you 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 give me some money and he looks at her and he goes shut up <laughs> like shut up, man. shut up like right there <laughs> and i was like I, I, literally i turned and looked at caleb and i was like welcome to new york <laughs> <laughs> this but is the life baby we were also broke college kids so they had four dollar beers at tgi fridays and so we went to tgi fridays Dude, I yeah, hear if you go to New like, York, TGI Fridays is the move. <laughs> we, we went to TGI Fridays and got four dollar beers, and uh, That's pretty lit. Well, and there was this dude. His name was Jerry. It's like seventy year old dude. His name was Jerry. He sat next to us. Jerry, we talked seven, to Jerry for seventy. Jerry. 70. Okay. There's a seventy year old dude named Jerry, and he sat and talked to us for like three hours, and ended up buying us beer and stuff. And I was like, what a strange dynamic that people on the street are just absolute assholes. But you come into the TGI Fridays, and when you're here, you're family. Like, I don't. <laughs> that's their motto, understand. baby. That's their motto, man. When you're here, you're family. I don't think that's actually their I think motto. That's Garden. Yeah. Is it Olive well, Garden? It's definitely yeah. somebody. Yeah. I think it's Olive Garden. Well, my favorite place to visit in New York, uh, I think, was definitely Chinatown. I never got to go to Chinatown, mm -hmm. dude. I loved Chinatown, man. It was awesome. I think that would be tight. Isn't that where they filmed uh, the Rush Hour movies? Uh, I don't know. Or at least the first but, one. When but I, I, on, I went to Chinatown in San Francisco. Chinatown and uh, riding the ferry to the Statue of Liberty. Like on the ferry was oh, like, yeah. dope. Like, I wish you could have done that. Yeah. Um, so those are, those are my two favorite things there. Um, what do you think is going to happen whenever, uh, like, inevitably it's going to happen in war at some point whenever they just decide to nuke the the Statue of Liberty. N or um, just nuke New York. Directly. New York doesn't exist. <laughs> no. Well, I, no, I'm so, they're not even, they're like, screw the people, bro. We're just going to blow this statue up that means so much like, to these people. Well, they, like, could do that, they can do that with a regular cruise missile. If they're going to shoot a nuclear missile, though? No. No, it's <laughs> no, just well, a nuclear missile that's like tiny enough to where it only causes a mushroom cloud the size of the Statue of Liberty. And the radiation and it, and only stays on the island. And instead of an explosion, it just goes. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and, and, and it's like a, it has a cartoon like bubble 
come up of like yeah, come yeah, up yeah, yeah. Like, the, the radiation <laughs> only stays on that island so you can't rebuild it but you, you yeah. know it's just yeah it's such a weird story of how we got that too like i it, well have you heard the actual story uh maybe not seen national know. treasure no with nicholas cage oh my gosh guys seen, i think i've, I've heard of it on uh mind. expedition unknown or whatever so um, there's a podcast, actually, that if you're not listening to this podcast, that you should check out. Um, and it's the Mike Rowe, the guy that does Dirty Jobs. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. The way I heard it, I think is what it's called. And he does a story about the Statue of Liberty. And it's talking about how, like, this wealthy family was able, like, it was supposed to be bought by, bought from France by, like, some Middle Eastern country. And that fell through. And we were able to get it because some rich family here that owned the newspaper in New York um, bought it and they paid for it by if anyone donated their money to pay for the statue, their names were listed in the newspaper. And that's how they paid for it. Huh. Yeah, it was it was I crazy. It was, I thought it was like a like a peace thing from France or whatever. That's what I thought too. Yeah, that's what school teaches you, but that's wrong. Okay. Yeah, school, well, so tell me that Christopher Columbus was the first person to set foot on North America. That's so. that's true. That's also true. Yeah. <laughs> They're like Christopher Columbus was the first person to find North America. There was people there when he got there, but he was the first. <laughs> like, yeah, and he was, was he was a hero. Other, there was also was a hero. other captains that had sailed across the great waters and yes. and landed there before him. There was <laughs> many wasn't just indigenous people. <laughs> Many, many men sailed the seas uh, to find America, but uh, Christopher Columbus was British, so he was the first. <laughs> yeah, he was Bro. the first white man. <laughs> Can you so think about the, how yeah, crazy that would be, like legit, back in that time? If, you, like, Columbus, right? He was like, I'm going to find a route that's faster to India. That was he the whole thing, right? Columbus thought the earth was flat, and that's why what? this was some kind of huge thing, because they thought the earth was flat. Like, I thought that he was one of the ones that didn't think it was flat. That's why he wanted to know. sail That's around. A, I don't know, but imagine the, it doesn't matter if you think the Earth's flat or if you think it's round. I mean, I mean, I guess it does. It's if it's flat, you'd think you might fall off the Earth, right? Whenever I'm talking about back in 14, ridiculous. If you, think, statement, if you think the Earth is flat now, you can't be helped. You know, okay, I so. honestly think it would be better if the Earth was flat. I think that would be so much more fun. Yeah, you know, it's just like a game oh, of yeah. risk. Think about just like. <laughs> Think about just pushing someone off the side. <laughs> yeah. No, really but, they just fall into an but, but imagine, space. imagine the fear of someone in like the 1400s. I don't know if they knew someone had been there or not in 1492 or whatever when he sailed the ocean blue, but sail, sail, I think. You're sell, no, it's 1492. You're selling in your ship. Yeah. And you're like. Well, 1492 is when I thought that was when he landed. Yeah, it probably took him 30 yeah. years to get there. But well, definitely took at least like eight months or some shit. He's basically in a giant wooden kayak. So, but imagine like the fear of like being on the ship. Like you don't know, what you're, you don't know what you're gonna see, right? You don't know what you're gonna run right. in. That's what I'm saying. Imagine like him, right? He he was just thinking, I'm just gonna find a route. That's what we're going to find. Imagine his crew going. Wait, we're we're just gonna sail in. This I didn't direction. volunteer for this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Wait, they're no. just like we're we're just gonna sail in one direction and hope that we well, freaking get somewhere that we've been another way. Why would yeah. why well, would we do that? And then you well, land, think about seeing land and going, we man. did it, we did it, and then landing and seeing nothing and just yeah. going. <laughs> well, imagine, <laughs> imagine, imagine I don't think we did it, guys. Imagine imagine being a, a like on a, a spaceship of like two hundred people. Flying to Mars, and there might be people on it. Like we know, there's not because we've got telescopes no, and all kinds of crazy not, stuff. But okay, but imagine going to Mars and the, and there's like the probability is very high that there's people on there and you don't know what they're gonna be like. But you get there and they're like shooting bows at you and throwing <laughs> balls with ropes on them and stuff at you. You know, and you're like, <laughs> and first then, of all, I don't think that's how they were greeted at all. And they, and they don't speak the same language. They got paint on their faces and stuff, and you're like. Oh my god, dude! These guys are gonna kill us. You know they're crazy. I don't think that's at all what happened. Christopher Columbus, like he, like he, like yes, two months, two months at sea. We finally, we finally found land, and everyone gets off the boat and they're like high fiving each other, like yes, we did it. A new home for our family. And (laughs) the boat just comes flying out of the air. 
you know, this guy just they just tan this really tan guy with long black hair just walks out of the wood woods holding an ear of corn and just walks up to you and hands it to you and you're like where the hell are we you just Thank smack you. it and you go get that corn out of my face <laughs> Now I shout, get going out to my face. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, man. You give them dysentery and they all die. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't think there was ever an issue until we got them all sick and they started dying. And then they were like, hey, go home. And we were like, no, we have more powerful weapons than you. We'll just kill yeah. you. We have muskets. <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, here's some corn. You're like, oh, geez, thanks. Here's smallpox. <laughs> and they're like, here's an uncurable disease for you. Have fun with that. And Here, also, we're, we're gonna kill all your buffalo. Here, you can gonna... sleep in our. You can sleep in our tent. <laughs> sleep in this teepee. Welcome. <laughs> My name is Pocahontas. <laughs> That's the only word he knew. <laughs> Welcome. It's the end of the conversation. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Corn. Be- bienvenidos. <laughs> <laughs> God, corn. He took such a long pause. He you... was like, "Welcome." My name is Jeff. My name is Jeff. <laughs> my name is Jeff. Oh my god, dude. That must have been kind of scary though. When you run into the first, like, when they got there and they're like, they're like, "Hello," and they're like, "Whoa," and you're like, "What the hell?" <laughs> what did yeah. you say to me? We're speaking what a the... whole different language. But you gotta say that. You got but you gotta pronounce the H whenever they say that. What the heck did you say? Yeah. What? What'd you say to me? <laughs> they just immediately yeah. landed in Texas and they immediately started talking in a southern accent. Yeah, yeah. they did land. They did land kind of close to New York. Hey, did Native Americans have horses whenever Christopher Columbus arrived? Uh, I don't uh, think so. Yes, possibly. I don't think so, I'm pretty sure that were the Spaniards there yet? I don't even think. Well, the Spaniards were definitely the first to land there, yeah. Then they might have had horses, bro. I don't think they had brought horses over yet. Sean, can you Google this? Uh, the original theory accepted by the Western world, that's us, was that there were no horses <laughs> in, the, in the Americas prior to Columbus's arrival in 1492. The Western world, us, concluded that all horses of Native American peoples were therefore descendants of horses brought from overseas. But... That's false. Yes, there were horses and native culture before the arrival of Christopher Columbus. Columbus did not introduce them. Oh, dang, okay. bro. So the Spanish there first. So that's yet another that's lie. Very, that, and they, that they, also, they also found uh, pre-Columbian um, Oh, there's horse. like there's like there's like Viking runes and shit from all over America that well, were you know from way before. Well, they, yeah, they found, yeah. That's crazy right there. That's crazy. But you know what's like a wooden like twisted stick figurine uh of native americans like in arizona like they found this that was like three thousand years old or something or something like that and it's just like of a horse it's like a wooden tiny wooden horse so like three thousand years before columbus even showed up so which is makes sense for horses to be here before they were that's that's what's so funny right it's because the the, the school our schools literally just told us to our face they said they taught you the Spaniards brought horses over, and the Native Americans That's also had probably ho- true. The Native Americans had horses when Christopher Columbus arrived, and when Christopher Columbus arrived, he was the first one to the United States. <laughs> oh, well, oh, well how do they have horses? The Spaniards weren't there first. That's like it's like, hey, I like product A more than I like B, and I like product C more than I like product B. But I don't like product A more than I like product C. Yeah. You know, I, mean, I forget what they call that. It's like, uh, oh, what are, it's, it's something. I'm going to be honest know. with you right now. I don't know if it's because I had a couple of white claws before the podcast, but I'm fucking confused. <laughs> yeah. It's also because I just learned that this semester. So, you know. <laughs> Basically, it's like, it's like if I like iPhone more than I like Android, right? And then uh-huh. I like Android more than I like like Nokia flip phones, but I like Nokia flip phones more than I like iPhones. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, it just it lo- like logically it doesn't yeah. follow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's what I'm saying. They were like, "Hey, Done. the Spaniards brought horses over. The Indians had horses. 
but Columbus was the first one to bring horses over. <laughs> yeah. Sean, yeah, I wish you had a I wish you had a beard right now. You'd look like a straight up lumberjack in that flannel. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh thank you. I get I think. Um I might dude, have said it wrong if, the first time. If England if England had it their way, Columbus would have sailed to America by himself, been the first person there, a true British hero. And then just asexually populated the entire continent by himself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's how they would have told it. And they were all, all the babies came out true British. And they, would, and they would have made the Native American slaves. Yeah, that's probably If I'm being honest, have. though, can you imagine how good all that felt for Columbus before he was probably brutally murdered some way? <laughs> like, yeah. he, he was like, I'm going to find a new trade route to India. Well, you know, he, well, my and then thing he is, he found an entire new world. Did somebody sail back and tell him? He did. He sold. He said, so he sailed back to tell him. Yeah, yeah he yeah. sold back. I mean, it's not like he can send a text. And he brought the height oh, of a he's... bison with him. Did he really? No, uh, I don't know. probably. Uh, I was going to say I must have missed this day in fourth grade. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> also, that's the only reason we call them Indians. That's so crazy to me. Because, he, like, when they landed, they thought they were in India, so they were just calling them all Indians. Yeah. And it's so confusing nowadays, because if you say Indians, people are like, which Indians do you mean? Native Americans or people from India? My brother it's was like, talking about this the other day, because he was like, because he travels a lot and, like, meets a lot of international people. And he was like, yeah, sometimes when I say I'm flying to Georgia, they always ask, like, which one? Africa. Or, wait. No, oh yeah, Georgia like, in Africa or Georgia here? It's it's in the Middle East or something, right? It's in the Middle yeah. East, yeah. Yeah, it's on the it's it's by the UAE, by, isn't like, it? Somewhere over there, I don't know. It's by Saudi Arabia or Turkey. But he's, Turkey. but you know, and there's there's other places like that too. I forget what he said, but he was like, but they never ask you which one when you say you're flying to Houston. <laughs> I'm like, hey man, it's funny. Everyone in the world knows what Houston is. H town, baby. Everyone. Like, when they fly, people fly from China. Well, H-town, don't they go to... Mean? Do they go to H-Town from China? I would I mean, imagine, right? You, I mean, you, yes, probably, you probably land in Atlanta and then fly into H-Town. Atlanta? No, no, you'd land in California. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm think, I was thinking Europe. I don't know why the hell I was thinking Europe. Yeah, you probably uh, land Georgia in like, San Diego. Or... Georgia is northeast of uh, Turkey. Yeah. Is it sharing the same border? Uh, it shares a border with Turkey and Armenia. Okay, and, cool. Now I know exactly where it is. Also, and Azerbaijan. It's like it's like. Can you imagine back in the day when you're like, a, you know, conquering places, and you're like, "Hey, I'm gonna go get Turkey," and they're like, "Which one?" <laughs> I like hamburger. Yeah, like <laughs> they're like, are they like, you know, are they gonna go like, are they what, like you're going, you're gonna, go, I'm hungry. Yeah, let's let's go get Turkey. He's like, no, 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 I'm I'm gonna go take over Turkey. Yeah, like, like the country, not the not the yeah. bird. I'm probably gonna slaughter a lot of people along the way. I'm it's gonna just, slaughter a lot of turkeys. Good. Yeah, it's like Alexander the Great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like he was like, man, I killed so many turkeys. Well, Alexander like, the Great probably didn't know what a turkey is. Turkeys are native nor- natives of North America, aren't they? Well, yes, but Alexander the Great, no. uh, Christopher Columbus probably brought him over. True. True, but I think but, Turkey. I but think Alexander Turkey's the Great was nature. older than Christopher Columbus, though. So, I think, yeah, yeah. Did you say you think the nation of Turkey is older than Christopher Columbus? Is that what you said? No, 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 no. no. Alexander the Great is. Yeah. Oh, yes. I think Turkey's I believe, yes were the because that was like the whole thing about the the pilgrims or whatever, right? Like Thanksgiving, which is also a bunch of bullcrap. But what are we gonna, <laughs> that's a whole other thing. Thanks for giving. Smallpox. <laughs> yeah, what it should have been called. It uh, they like they cooked a turkey because that's what the Native Americans had here. They had turkeys. You mean they slaughtered a turkey in cold? Blood. Was it? Was it? Was it an actual turkey that was eaten on Thanksgiving? Is that what it was? I, I actually don't think it was. I don't think it was. Because I, I, I don't could think be wrong. Native, I don't think the Native Americans would have wasted their times with freaking turkeys. You know. I don't know, man. Turkey slaps, brother. It does, but yeah, like, but they were, didn't know that yet. They you know, in a turkey, they they couldn't fry it. So like, I'm just saying they were smoking a lot of weed back then, bro. 
The Native Americans <laughs> knew what was up. They were smoking a lot of pot. They were eating a lot of things, and they were trying a lot of things. They probably got around to a turkey, and they were like, "Yo, this is dry as hell, but it tastes good, bro." Was it was it was it pot or was it what is what does Ricky Bobby's peyote. dad smoke? Peyote, yeah, yeah. yeah. They ate oh, the turkey and herbs. And uh, you know, that's they're like, man, this sure is filling, and they all fell asleep and went into a ten years slumber. Yeah, and then that's when Columbus rolled up on the beach, and they all woke up, and they were like, "What enough?" <laughs> Dude, we ruined on? their lives, man. They had a peaceful life over here, uh, on their own. I know. They did did y'all see that Martin Scorsese is coming out with a a new movie with uh, Scorsese, whatever his name is, Scorsese, whatever, yeah. with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio for like uh, it's about yeah. like where they were all killed in Oklahoma, all the Indians. I didn't know the Native about, American. But sorry, I didn't know what it's about, but I have seen like uh, pictures of it. Yeah, and they said Leonardo DiCaprio was unrecognizable. <laughs> he just looks like Neo Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> Wait, they said he was unrecognizable in the filming, and he still just looks like himself. Yeah, and it's a. They said Leonardo DiCaprio is unrecognizable in this film, and it's a picture of him sitting next to this Native American lady who's like actually from a Native American tribe, like grew up in a Native American tribe, and he's sitting next to her. <laughs> it's very obviously Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> 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 oh my god what, uh, so what's up we're gonna talk we're gonna talk about some brooklyn stuff or do you want to hear some brooklyn know. facts the only thing i really know about brooklyn is like that jay-z song concrete jungle wet dream tomato that one yeah with green tomato but what you know which what one's mean? the one where he's like uh, uh no it's, it's wet dream tomato what's the one where he's like uh with green this... tomato that's that green salsa. <laughs> uh, so you want you want to know some Brooklyn facts? Empire, is it Empire State of Mind? Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that song, dude. That song New gets me hard. New York. Yeah, is that Alicia Keys? No, I think it's uh, I think it's Rihanna. Have you heard Alicia Keys do it? She does it so well. No, honestly, there's that song that I always think of, and then there's uh. Uh, the Frank, it's Sinatra, isn't it? New York. Oh, yeah. Oh, New yeah. York, New, New York. York. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love Frank Sinatra, dude. I wouldn't walk through New York listening to Frank Sinatra. I, would I feel like that. also if I go to New York, I have to go to like a place like that, you know? Like a jazz place? Yeah. yeah. Like that would Piano be cool. bar, I guess. That would be cool. That would be really cool. We should all do that when we get rich. And I have be to be tight. wearing a, a velvet velvet uh dude, sports know, coat well my thing a cigar. my thing with Absolutely. with new york dude glass of is that with a cinnamon it, coming out of it oh yes <laughs> sir the thing about new york is that it's like not ever gonna be what you expect it to be like <clears throat> because like that's like i would love to be in new york anywhere like from prohibition to the 50s or the 60s, from Prohibition to the 60s, I think. I would love to be in New York. Because it's like, you know, that's that's when all the cool shit happens, right? Yeah. But you go to, and like, you have like, this vision of like, Great Gatsby, and like, how cool it is, and like, Prohibition era, and like, uh, Frank Sinatra, and like, Babe Ruth, and all this shit. And you get there, and it's just a dirty, stinky, trash heap, with decent pizza. I don't know, man. Baseball player I, 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 with a I, I, front tooth gap the size of. I don't know about Golden that, bro. Bridge. To me, to me, New York is. <sighs> I mean, well, I guess, I would say New York in. 2012, 2013, you know, before our, everything became, political. Everything became we hate each other. Everything became coronavirus. You know, like before all that, New York. You could go to New York and get whatever you were looking for. You know, like. No, no, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love New York, but they have a severe trash problem. <laughs> like, the whole city stinks. Like, because, the, like, it may look fine in the morning, like, when you wake up, but around after 8 o'clock at night, there's 50 trash bags piled up every 10 feet down any road you go down, and the whole city smells like trash. I just feel like also, in the, you know, obviously I've never been there, so I'm... I'm 100% saying that I'm wrong, but I feel like every day in New York, 
it's like cloudy with a with a small percent chance of rain all the time. I'm like, uh, it's like, sunny there a lot. It is well, sunny. because like I just, and that's just because you know, like that's how it is in a lot of movies. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. it's just yeah. always kind of like gloomy looking there. And I'm like, the first time I went, <sighs> it was 97 degrees outside. Yeah, dude, I would love to be in. <laughs> I would nice. love. To, I would absolutely like kill to be in New York through the Christmas holiday. You know, yeah, like Home Alone style. Like mm-hmm. I would love to do that, and then like I don't think New I would want to be through the, through the Christmas holiday, but definitely like I would want to go in like December at some point when it's snowy. I don't want to be there for Christmas, but oh, I would love it. Like like a downtown hotel. Like I bet the lights and stuff are really nice there. Yeah, during like, Christmas time. Because you know all those to. places, all those like storefronts and stuff along the whatever it is. I'm I'm just gonna say like the Strip, you know. No, that's not what it's called there, but like downtown New York where it's like really popping. Everybody's decorating their shit up with the nicest lights and at least that's what I imagine. It's just like when you I feel like when you imagine New York, like in that time period, it almost seems Italian. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. It almost oh, seems yeah, like mobs, old Italian. And then you go to New York and it's kind of hard to find an Italian place other than a pizza joint. <laughs> you're not gonna lie but don't get me wrong i did go to one italian restaurant and got like a six square foot chicken parmesan i'm not, I'm not joking it was probably the size it was probably a, a 15 did inch it, chicken parmesan slap, though was it good oh it was fantastic uh, had to get yeah, noodles yeah. on the side that's so one thing you know, that's one thing i listen i hate the yankees i fucking i do i do i can't stand the yankees but the one thing that i give new york is i bet they know how to make some fucking food over there bro they do. They do. There, there's all kinds of places. I mean, like I said, you go to Chinatown, you get some really good Chinese food. You go to mm. like certain other areas, you get some Italian food. <clears throat> other areas, you get some really good like. I don't pizza even know. Pizza goes hard, dude. My uh, favorite what, thing about New York is you can I, walk down the street and get a slice of pizza and a soda for two bucks. I love that. Oh, I love that. Lit. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I went to I would be so um, fucking fat if I lived in New York. Yeah, I, I, that's what dude, I would we eat went, for lunch every fucking day. I would go to a different place every day and be like, "Yo, give me your best pizza." When we yeah, went to went like with a Pepsi, with a Pepsi. When we went to New York, I went to uh, an Italian food place that started to remember the Alamo chant. <laughs> really? In New York? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And everyone started <laughs> sing, started chanting, "Remember the Alamo?" Well, it was on a um, eighth grade trip with everyone from Texas. So, ah, yeah. I um, I was say, people in New York even know what the Alamo is. No, probably no. not. No, because That's why apparently I only in Texas, we're the only state in the entire country that has to learn an entire year of history class based around its own state. Which is uh, awesome, yeah. dude. Texas proud, man. Texas forever. Look, I'm just saying it's stupid. <laughs> I oh, I really, you know what I really want to do? It could have been that much smarter at something else. I think it's really high yeah. on my bucket list. Is I want to go back to New York. And get New York pizza because I didn't do it whenever I was there the first time because I was a little kid and didn't realize what I was missing out on. And two, oh, man, really? I want to go to I Philadelphia like... and get a the best Philly cheesesteak in Philadelphia. Yes, bro. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That sounds so Which, good. It's not an also, I also want to go to Chicago. I want to go back to Chicago and eat some Chicago food. style pizza. Yeah. Why did you say that in the in a Mexican accent? Yeah. Chicago. Chicago. <laughs> I want to go to Chicago, Chicago, eh? <laughs> to go to Chicago, eh? And go watch Dub Bears. No, Dub Bears. I, de- I mean, I definitely want to go to try the pizza for sure. I, I, I feel like as much as like a, a Pepsi and a slice of pizza would slap on like a 88 degree day in New York, I bet one of these fucking beers with a slice of Zaw and the Brooklyn Sun in New York, they actually call it peas. A, a slice of za. <laughs> call a it a slice, slice of peas. I would never want to call it a slice of peas in my life. <laughs> I just, I just made that up. I'm just kidding. okay. Okay, good. But I feel like, I feel like one of these beers with a slice of za in Brooklyn on a nice sunny that day would go good at at a Mets game. Oh yeah. You see, you see the thing about you see, the thing about New York is that you can get a piece of just cheese pizza, and it's still probably one of the best pizza you've ever had in your life. Yeah, well, just it's, it all comes down to the quality of cheese that's used, dude. Because you it can is, tell the difference, man. You really can. Yeah, absolutely. It needs to be chewy. 
Yes. The cheesiest yeah, yeah, yeah. chewy. Yeah, it, absolutely uh, it does. You want to know some fun facts about Brooklyn? Mm-hmm. Uh, Tootsie yeah, Rolls were invented. Tootsie Rolls were invented in Brooklyn. What? Okay. What's your stance on Tootsie Rolls? I haven't had one in a couple years. Probably, honestly, probably five or more years was the last time I had a Tootsie Roll. But I used to, I used to like Tootsie Rolls. I probably still would. Listen, they're too man, chewy, but they're not bad. They're not by any means my favorite. Don't get me wrong. Not a not like I'm not going to go to the store and see all this candy and pick a Tootsie Roll. I'm just not. No, I will eat one if it's free. But on Halloween, when you get it in that variety pack. I'll yeah. eat a couple Tootsie Rolls out of there, bro. Yeah. It's oh, just dude, with the orange and the green ones and the vanilla well, ones? I'm talking oh, about no, just the straight-up chocolate one, just the original Tootsie Roll. Well, you said variety pack. Well, I'm talking about like the, the Halloween variety pack of candy. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, you talking about the, the long, skinny one? one? Though, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I would mess – I mean, they're not my favorite by any means, but I would mess some up for sure. Mm. Yeah. You want to know what else? Uh, credit cards – we're invented in Brooklyn. Makes sense. New York's like the banking capital of everything. Pretty yeah, much. Just, uh, and then this other random fact is that one time, 21 elephants once crossed the Brooklyn Bridge. At oh, once? I would assume so. I wish they had that on video. VHS. That sounds absolutely VHS. horrifying to witness. Dude, I loved walking across. What's that? Br- I think I think it was the Brooklyn Bridge that I walked across, and they were selling like gelato and stuff on there. Oh, and for, gelato. Sure that, for sure, that it? had to be Brooklyn Bridge. It was either the Brooklyn Bridge or the Manhattan Bridge because he probably went walking across. It was a Brooklyn. Bridge. It was a Brooklyn one for sure. Then because the Brooklyn is the Brooklyn Bridge is the one with the big arches and like yeah, robes and that one. That one's the one. You know, you know what else it's probably plays like into the fact that I think it's always like a drowsy day there is. Isn't that where like all the Batman stuff is filmed? Uh, that's where it all pretty it, much takes place. Like, well, it's Gotham. But why do they give it a Gotham different Gotham name? Yeah, like New York. Yeah, but why I mean, do they like, do that? It's filmed all in New York, right? Yes. Yeah. Pretty much. Because <clears throat> I, I, I think some show, Batman. like the Gotham show, first of all, incredible show. What is it on? Uh, it was on Netflix. I don't know if it is anymore. I think it was on like FX or something. I've like, never like, seen that. No, it was, no it, it was on like ABC or something. CW. Mm, it was some I Fox. I think it was CW. Something like that. But it was on Netflix. Might have been Fox. Might have been Fox. It was one of like the local channels like ABC, NBC, CBS. It might have been CBS. But uh, FX has the movies. It was, I don't know. It was on Netflix for a while and. Uh, Incredible show. It's like pre bat it's like Gotham pre Batman when all the villains are starting to take over. Really? Mm-hmm. And like Batman's a little kid and his parents just died, you know, like that kind of stuff. Huh. It's a really good show and but it's it, that's what I'm saying. It's like it's it's there's never a sunny day. Even the clear days where it's not raining, it's like dark outside the whole time. Huh. There's clouds everywhere. And so that's where I get my reasoning for thinking that it's always nasty out there when in reality it's probably really nice all the time it is i i could see what you're saying though it kind of feels like a like a, a grungy like, like yeah i don't know i feel like if there's a, a city that's going to go cyberpunk before everybody else it's going to be new york what is cyberpunk it's like a uh is that the society g- kind of that's the game you played but i don't know but a cyberpunk society kind of yeah, it's like supposed to like, be super far in the future or whatever, where it's like very cyborgish, very technology oriented. Like, but like, it's like a mix between steampunk and like super high intelligent AI. Like Hong Kong kind of stuff. Hong Kong will probably also be very close to follow. Yeah. Or Tokyo. Actually, Hong Kong might be first. One of those. Yeah. Or yeah, Tokyo probably. Yeah. Yeah. What? New York will be the first in the what? Americas to do it. Yeah. I would, I would say so, probably, yeah. Which isn't a bad thing. I think that'd be re- pretty cool. Personally, I'm ready for it. Let's get there. Elon Musk is is working the working our way there, anyways. Yeah, we're getting there. Uh, 
one one uh, say another thing about uh Brooklyn is that I think a couple years ago uh they found a Cold War era bomb shelter hidden underneath the Brooklyn Bridge. These like Ow. cities the city maintenance workers were like doing like routine maintenance and stumbled across it and it says the nuclear bunker is inside one of the massive stone arches below the bridge's main entrance and it's chock full of supplies including medication, water drums, paper blankets and 352,000 packs of crackers. Oh yeah, cuz that's the greatest idea in the world. If 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 someone is going to blow up the city where I want to be is on a bridge over the water. <laughs> no, it's not on the bridge. It was the entrance of the bridge. <laughs> so the part that connects to the island. Yeah. But also, horrible spot. New right. York's going to be the first place, one of the first places they blow up. Well, well that's where they need bomb shelters. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, yeah, like I, I don't know. I guess uh, I guess yeah, I sound <laughs> stupid for that. But I'm just I just mean like you know, I don't know. It seems like uh, I don't know. It seems like a bomb would blow up a shelter that's like on the side of a bridge, basically, or like in the yeah. right there. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like you, know, it's got to be in the ground somewhere. You know, like below some buildings or something. It says it says the supply box is inside were stamped with two significant dates. 1957, when the Soviets launched the Sputnik, Sputnik satellite, and 1962, the Cuban Missile Crisis. Oh, wow. That's so, crazy. like, they were like, oh, shit. Send some supplies down there. We need yeah, some crackers. At, we're running out of what, crackers. I always wonder, like, if, if like, what, what was going through people's minds, like, while they were alive during that, or, like, people that were alive during Y2K. Like, and during Y2K, well, everyone freaked out, you know? Here's the thing, though. During, thinking about, like, the Cuban Missile we Crisis and stuff. I know, but we didn't. We weren't like old enough to recognize what was going on. The Cuban Missile Crisis and stuff. Like, there was a lot of people alive. Sure, yeah, but the only way to really hear about it was the radio. Yeah, so, and only rich people had radios or stuff. Yeah, like. that's what I'm saying. So, like, they might have been talking about it all the time, but it wasn't like in our hand, the information, you know, we weren't getting Amber alerts that, Hey, Cuba might blow us up guys. Be careful. It was like news stuff though. Like newspapers, everyone had newspapers in their towns. I mean, except for like small towns. No, I know, but I'm just saying they didn't know right away. So like, think about, think about like if that were to happen now, like if, if United be, States, we would know when the missile was launched. The, if the United <laughs> States was like, Hey, yo, Cuba is about to launch some missiles. Literally, it would be tweeted out by the president or somebody, and we would get a notification of somehow, and all these yep. news people would like send it to our phones and stuff. But then people were yeah, just it'd like, be it'd be like, like seventeen minutes from now, the trajectory is to New York. So you yeah, know, like, like people now or then people were like at work or whatever, and you know they were just living their normal life, and then they woke up the next morning, they had their coffee. And like everything was fine, and they got the morning newspaper, and it was like, "Oh, hey, by the way, Cuba may or may not have launched a missile yesterday. We really don't know." <laughs> and they were like, "Everyone was like, sure oh, that? Sh you sure about that?" Because they didn't even know where that Chinese rocket was going to land. No, but we knew that it was coming back. Okay, are you talking about the thing that was in the news the other day? Probably, yeah. I, where did it land? In the ocean somewhere. And it was a it was a rocket. Is a uh, part of a rocket from a Chinese satellite that they launched or something like that. What do they not know how like science works and like didn't know how to <laughs> launch it right? Yeah, it was like it broke off and it was like an uncontrolled reentry, and so they didn't know where it was going to land. And they were like, "Yeah, well, probably over here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't well, land on anybody's house, we don't think. We'll uh, see though." But but, but what I'm know. saying is like no, but to, it, to we everyone to knew. What was saying to you, what Randall was saying. I was like, <laughs> to be honest, I was like, well, this is the point I'm trying to make. Anti, I would rather not know. But uh, I was like, yeah, we don't know where it's going to land, but I guarantee you, the second that thing broke off, the United States military has been tracking it and knows ex its precise location yeah. at all times. We're gonna blow that thing up. It's not coming but, here. But. They didn't tell us, <laughs> you know. It's, well, 
And so if another country launches a missile at us, right, they're going to blow it up in the air before it hits us, unless that country has a lot of oil and we want to go to war and take the oil. <laughs> okay. We're getting too political now. It's time to give the final <laughs> ratings, guys. <laughs> How are we feeling after two of them? I finished two. I'll go, I can give mine. I'm going to bump it. Six. I'm going to bump mine to an 8.9. Respectable. 8.6, 8.9. Uh, I think I nailed it on the head with my 8.3. I like the 8.3 for it. I think it's a great beer. I think, 8.3. I think this is one of my favorite beers, but I agree with Sean. I don't think it deserves a 9. Because I've had better. But well, yeah, if you're going to get something a 9, it's got to be <clears throat> something yeah. that you, you take a sip of and you're like, oh, I know oh, what yeah. this is. I'm, yeah. not saying this I know is what this my, is. I'm not saying this is in my top five, but it's up there. It's you know it's I mean? a delicious beer that people should try. There's and probably top 15 beers. I'm going to say opinion. maybe maybe other than the the Montucky, this is my favorite out of state beer that I've ever had so far. I'm going to have to disagree, but <clears throat> so far. That's not it's, counting it is, like, well, you know, one of, yeah, it's up there. Top probably top 3 out of state beers. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm a sucker for some Dos Equis. <laughs> well, yeah, other than like, beer. I'm saying I, I wanted to say that like other than like the big, you know, yeah, big yeah, brands. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking like craft beer. I don't know, man. This even is up there with like like it's completely different than a Dos Equis. Like 100 percent different. Oh yeah, but oh yeah, for sure. I don't know, man. Like something about it, I really like. Yeah, it seems very dark. Has anyone been able to like see? Like, I didn't look. We should have poured it. Tastes kind of hoppish, you know. Well, it says it says a hoppy amber ale or a hoppy amber lager. No, it's pretty clear. Really? Yeah. Well, IPAs are pretty clear. It's almost like water clear. No, I had a cup of water sitting next to me that I poured it into, so I could see it while it was coming out, but I can't really see it in the glass. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, it was like too clear almost. Hold on. I don't know about too clear, but no, it's like water clear. <laughs> what it looks like when I'm pouring it, but it doesn't taste like water. I'll give you that. I'll give them that. Okay, you guys watch, 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 watch. <clears throat> okay. Just... It's flowing into it. your mouth. It's like a pea color. Yeah, it's like a pea color. Maybe a little lighter. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Hey, y'all want to know something really cool? Oh God! I didn't spill a single freaking drop. Whenever I was pouring in my mouth, that's pretty amazing. You know what else is amazing? What's that? Following off the tap pod on Twitter. Yep, off the tap pod on Twitter and TikTok. Everything else is off the tap podcast. That's Instagram, Facebook, and uh, Patreon. If you want to, you know, support us on Patreon, you don't have to. It's pretty cool to. to do. It's very well, nice. Not, not, not Patreon. I mean, it's cooler pretty cool to did. follow us on anything. Yeah, very cool. Uh, Twitter is the best way to get in contact with us. That's the most active one we do. Um, 27 episodes in and still no one has sent Andrew a single question. Yeah, true. Great. Yeah, mm-hmm. We just want questions, guys, from anyone. It doesn't matter at this point. It doesn't matter what mm-hmm. the question is. We'll answer it. It doesn't. Be anything. Anything. It could be, it could be very <laughs> profound. Personal. Could be very, very personal, and Andrew will answer it. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. I promise you, I will. I'll, I'll answer it live on the next podcast. Would you say you would get dirty doing it? What do you mean? You know, or would you get far enough? Would you be getting dirty? Well, I mean, if you ain't getting dirty, you ain't getting far enough. 